Well, there we are. I hope I've made myself quite clear. To all present, I hope. Quite clear, are we all then? Oh, yes. And uh, are you clear in your own mind, Mr. Darwin, sir? I don't know what to say, do I? There's nothing I can say, is there? If I don't know nothing, I can't say nothing, can I? That is very true. Very true indeed, that is. And how about you then, young Lawrence? Are you going to tell me where your brother is? I don't know where he is. I've no idea where he is. Well, when you see him, tell him this. Look, in every case... We haven't seen him. Look, why do you keep going on? We haven't seen him. Just tell him this. That in every case where an offender runs away from a borstal, we always catch him. So, if you have got him up in the loft, I suggest that after I've gone, you tell him to come down, take a little walk down the law shop and give yourself up. This is a ground floor flat. We haven't got a loft. <laughs> Thank you for the welcome tea, madam, and uh, cheerio, young Lawrence. Good lad. of the policeman's job. And if anyone has any questions they would like to ask, I would be only too happy to answer them. Anyone who wants to be the first to ask um, Constable Davis a question? Come on, don't be afraid. Ask him whatever you like. Now is your chance to have a go at the man in blue. All right then, Mr. Jakarti. I shall, I shall be the one to give the lead then, shall I? And I will start with a question that everyone always seems to want to know about, which is, do I carry a truncheon? And the answer to that is, yes, I do. And here, it is. And I'll tell you something else, which is, every time I take this out of my pocket for whatever reason, when I get back to the station, I have to fill in a form for my governor to tell him exactly why I did so. Even today, when I get back, I will have to fill in a form to tell him why I drew my stick, which is what we call it, a stick, and that was to show it to you. So, has anyone got over their shiners yet? Oh, all right, never mind. There's another one that seems to crop up every time, and that is... Please, sir, when the police take someone to the police station, are they allowed to beat him up? And the answer to that is no, they are not allowed to beat people up. And well, we tired anyone who's caught doing it. Now, I am not saying to you that no one never gets hit in a police station. But if it ever does happen, it's always the person himself who's to blame and not the police. <laughs> no, all right, all right, all right. All right, well, we'll try a little experiment then, shall we? Hands up anyone who knows someone who has been hit in a police station. Now, come on, I'm not going to be taking any names now, am I? Come on, hands up anyone who knows someone who, when he was taken to a police station, he got it. Right, we 
all know someone who has been it in a police station. Now, keep your hands up if it was you yourselves. Now, there, I hope the rest of you see my point, do you? See, people claim they know someone who's been it in a police station, but do you know to this day I have never met anyone who says it was him who was it? People claim their way because, well, if you've just been and split on your mates, for example, well, it's a very handy excuse to say the police made you do it by hitting you. Well then, so now you know there's nothing you need be frightened of saying. So, how about one of you asking me something? Yes, there. Please, sir, is it right when old people are wandering about in the road, the police will come over to them, help them, speak to them nicely. But if it's children, they come and share them and tick them off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. And me. Yes, well, that's that's one that uh, seems to crop up all the time as well. Yes, well, uh, why don't you think about that one yourself for a minute? Um, yes, well, I mean, if we was to shout at all the old people in the street, then we wouldn't be making ourselves very popular now at all, would we? And if we didn't chase silly kids off the road where they could get themselves badly hurt, it wouldn't be long before we had all the old people shouting at us, eh? All right, Lawrence? Right, any more customers? Yes, my love. Please, sir, what do police horses have to eat? Well, at our police station, we've got police horses called Ford and Rover and Austin. So they have petrol to eat. <laughs> <laughs> you see, at most police stations, they don't have police horses anymore. Yes, please, Brenda. He's bought me the, uh... Oh, fuck. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. <laughs> Don't go about me giving you the money, will ya? <laughs> It'll be all right in a day or two. Two sugars, is it? a liar. You do know where your brother is, Larry. Now, come on, please, tell Mr. Davis where he is. I don't know where he is. Son, your mum wouldn't say you knew where he is if she didn't know you knew where he is. Now, would she? I don't know where he is. And she's not me mum. He takes after his dad. He's exactly like his dad. He's a liar, just like him. 16 minutes to four. Just about a quarter of an hour left on the George Dogger show this afternoon. Oh, it's for Denise, and she likes Buxfits. This is my camera, never lies. So, there we are. 
That's what I'm saying to you, young Lawrence. How about a little agreement? It's you and me between ourselves, eh? You tell me where your wicked brother is, and I'll say no more to anybody about that other little matter. I don't know where he is. He's exactly like his father. Well, son, it's up to you. Just have a little think about it, eh? Please, Larry. I don't want you to get into trouble. Neither does your dad, not even if you do deserve to. But please, Larry, if you won't say where Barney is, at least go and see him and talk to him and tell him if he doesn't give himself up, things is going to be very serious for you. Larry, he's got to. He does. He's got to. He's done wrong, and what's more, he's dangerous. He can hurt people. Dangerous? He is. You tell him what he got sent away to Borstal for, then go on. You tell him that. Right then. I'll tell him. Larry. Barney was sent away to Borstal for punching an old lady and knocking her down and kicking her and running off with our own bag. Hello, son. Nice to see you. How are you then? All right. Uh, Brenda's out at the minute, round the shops. She'll give you a cup when she comes back. Sit down. Not bought me any flowers, I know. Never mind. Sit down. How are you? All right. Bring us some more of these, will ya? It's my last one. Cracker. You can have it if you want it. Well, nice to see you, Larry. To see you nice, eh? I'll tell you what, though. You should not all come round here too often, son. You never know who might be watching. Know what I mean? Oh, I'm always very careful outside in the street, Barney. Have a good look round before I nip in. Oh, of course you are. Good lad. Just there's no point in taking chances, though, is there? Eh? Look, Barney, I've come to say, uh, I think you ought to give yourself up. What? Well, you are. You're a real comedian, Larry, aren't you? Look, son, once you had a flavour them places, you don't want to go back to them no more. You don't. And that's a fact. If they're going to have me, son, they need to come to that door more bandit they will. And I'm not joking. Had a bit of an accident, didn't you, love? Ran into that, didn't you? Hey? Eh? Two sugars, is it? But he whacked her! Well, so? So he whacked her. So I've whacked her sometimes. Sometimes you have to. Sometimes it's the only thing they understand. Is he dangerous? Well, he can be a bit lively. That's all I'd say. Not dangerous, a bit lively. <sighs> Look, son. I know how you must be feeling, but you can't grasp on your own brother. No one can. Not their own brother, not to the law. All right, so you just keep your chin up and take what you get for that spraying with the paint, but you don't grasp. You'll be admired for it, son. You'll be admired. You're the only one who knows where he is, then, Larry. I think you should go and tell your dad. Dad says don't tell him and don't tell anyone. That way, there's no one can give it away by mistake. If you did tell your dad, he could go and tell him that if he doesn't give himself up, you're the one that's going to cop it. He doesn't think he should give himself up, and he's not my dad. Are you right, Cole? I'm adopted. I wonder what you'd get for writing a big L.O. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not rude. Well, what are you going to do, Larry? I don't know. 
Would he pick you up? Barney? Nah. Is he your real brother? No, I told you, I'm adopted. So I could ask Mr. Jay, see what he thinks. Oh, sure. You could write, you could write an address. And, uh, on a piece of paper and put it through a police station level. Oh, sure. Hmm. Well, there's no need for Larry to be here with me, is there? And me asking him what he's going to do. His friends have been asking for me. It's quite a problem, though. I wonder what he will do. What do you think he should do? Well, that's it for this time. And in fact, that's it for this series of four stories about Jumbo and Alice and Titch and Larry and the problems they've had in trying to decide what to do. Next time, they'll all be here telling me in turn what did happen and whether it worked out for them or not. So, you can see how it compared with what you thought they should have done. See you then, all right. Ta-ra.